हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला एआई की पाठशाला आपकी अपनी पाठशाला है एंड व्हाट एवर सेशन आई एम कंडक्टिंग हियर इट्स एब्सोल्युटली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट एंड एनी वन ऑफ यू हु वांट टू जॉइन माय सेशन यू कैन गो टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन सेक्शन ऑफ द वीडियो एंड जॉइन माय टेलीग्राम ग्रुप लिंक एंड आल्सो जॉइन माय आल्सो सब्सक्राइब माय टेलीग्राम चैनल सो आई यूज्ड टू पोस्ट द लिंक ऑफ माय लाइव सेशन ऑन द टेलीग्राम चैनल and telegram group so by joining these loom you can have an access to all my free live sessions so we were discussing the advanced python and today is i suppose the 18th session in the advanced python and today we are going to discuss debugging in python so let's start let me share you my screen first and we will going to discuss debugging in python so let me share you my screen first so let's go let me open my vs code can you see my vs code i have already created one github repository for the today's session advanced by the name advanced underscore python underscore 018 and i have cloned that repository in my vs code and i have created three files debug1.py debug2.py debug3.py here because i am going to discuss three code and for that i have created three different different files to understand the debugging concept so without delay let's start first of all let me uh, tell you first let's understand what is what debugging means why we use debugging and what is the usefulness of debugging see debugging in python is the process of finding and fixing errors in your code and it is crucial part of the software development process as it helps us to ensure that our programs are working as expected so and there are different ways to debug python code one way of debugging the code that we are already using from the very day one that is the, and that is a common way we we are using the print statements let me open we were using print statements so this using this print statement print statement is also one way of debugging our code the one purpose of using this print statement whenever you, we we are writing any code and we want to check the output what is coming either we need that output or not if simply i want to check my result we used to write this print statement inside my code so that print statement will give me show me the output it displays the output and by seeing the output we can able to understand what is either right or what is wrong in our code and in that way we used to change if something went wrong we used to see our code we used to make some changes in our code this is a very simple way of using the debugging but we already know this but in a real software development process there is a concept of called debugger we use debugger using debugger this is called d d b u double z e r debugger we will use this this is a standard way of using for debugging your code what is this this is one tool this is a tool that allows you to step through your code one line at a time let me write step through code one line at a time line at 
a time we can able to see step through the code one line at a time and to inspect the values of variable and to inspect this is one thing and to inspect inspect values of variable variable fine at any point in the program and this can be very helpful for identifying the exact cause of an error so today we are going to discuss with the help of the code we are going to discuss how we can use the debugger in our program now let's uh, understand why this is the let's understand what are the benefit of using this debugger why why debugger is so much important why we use let's write the benefit benefit of using this debugger see one thing is very important it is essential for writing a very high quality software so what it means it will improve the it will improve code quality code quality how it will improve the code quality by identifying and fixing the errors by identifying identifying fine and fixing the errors and fixing errors so with the help of debugger how it will improve the code quality it will help us to identify the error and fix the error this is the one important thing this will lead to more reliable and robust programs when we are able to identify and fix our error so this in turn leads to more reliable and more robust program which in turn leads to more reliable reliable and robust program okay. second important thing it increase our productivity it increase productivity productivity how it increase productivity see whenever we develop any software or whenever we develop any program uh, applications so what before actually it helps us to increase our productivity by preventing us from spending time debugging the problems that could have been caught earlier in the development process so what it means when we are actually in the development uh, uh, production process before that if it if the error some problem will occur during the production process this will lead to a larger problem so before it we debug the code and we rectify all the issues and then we move to the production process this will increase our productivity and it also improved our learning it also improve our learning what is means to be learning simply it helps us to learn more about the python by forcing us to think about how your code works and how to identify and fix errors this is all about the theory there is nothing more now let's discuss these things that we have discussed right now with the help of code and let's understand how we are going to use this debugger in our code so here i am not going to discuss with you the code because these, these things we have already done 
simply I will uh, paste one code here. This is let's say this is one code I pasted here. I do not need to understand this code. Simply this code is there are some functions defined inside this code. There are let's say four functions inside this code and this is the thing. Simply let's understand how to use the debugger. See <clears throat> for applying the debugging process what is the first thing that I want that needs to be done is first you have to add a breakpoint. So how you can add a breakpoint? See can you see this number 1, 2, 3, 4 this is a line number. If you will simply come before that to the left hand side of and when you I am going to any line this I am seeing this red button. This red dot is coming. So if you click on any point this red dot will remain on that point. Can you see? If I will again click on this uh, this red dot, so this red dot will disappear. So this red dot is nothing. This is called a breakpoint. So at any point, wherever you want to add the breakpoint, you have to just click here. Let's say in this entire code, I want breakpoint on this line on 13th line. So I have to click here. So if I am clicking here, this breakpoint is added here. Now let's say if I want to add a breakpoint on the 14th line also, so I am clicking here. So two breakpoints get added. After that, I have to run and debug my code. If you see here, can you see this symbol run and debug? Here you can also see a bug, symbol of bug, this triangular symbol and uh, at the bottom there is a symbol of bug. So this you have to click here. If I am taking my cursor here, I can see it is showing run and debug. Simply I have to click there. If I or you can also do it from here also, here also you can see this this run and debug symbol if you am just clicking run and debug you can directly click here also or you can select debug python file here also from there also you can do so let's do it from here if i am just clicking here this thing will appear this entire thing will appear like that and i am getting this thing run as python file so let's run it start debugging so it is showing me can i see a green uh, there is a green button triangular button there and it is showing start debugging so if i will start here start debugging here you will see this <coughs> this thing at the first breakpoint <coughs> if i'm <coughs> If I am my debugging, when my debugging have started, so this red button is, this red uh, button is like a breakpoint. So whenever my code will start running from the first line, so let's say my code has started running from the first line, whenever it encounters wherever at, we, at that point where it encounters this red button, Red, this is called breakpoint. My code will stop there. So you can see my first breakpoint is here. So after running code from the first line to this point, my code has stopped here. At z is equal to add x comma y, it has stopped here. It is not coming. It is not going below that. It has stopped. Now. Let's see first few things. Let's understand this few things. When you see, when you can, if you can see to the left hand side of this screen, this code screen, you can see there is a, this is called variable section, variable. Inside this variable, you can see local x10, y5. That means 
till here wherever till here whatever the variable has come the this uh, code has uh, whatever variable this code is having and the value of the variable that it is showing here can you see x is equal to 10 so it is showing here x is equal to 10 y is equal to 5 it is showing these are my local variables now if i will click here global variables it is showing two things special variables and function variables let's click on special variables so these are the special variables it is showing and these are the inbuilt variables also now let's click on the function variable if you will click on the function variable if you will click on the building variables also then you will get to uh, know a lot of other things so let's not go into it let's click on function variable if i am clicking on the function variable let's click on the function variables you can see there are three functions inside this code my first function is my add function it is showing here second function is my subtract function it is showing here and one function is my main function and it is showing all the three function variable is showing here fine let's remove this okay now what it means this thing is completed now let's understand when you will see at the above of this program after you start your debugging process this thing will appear let me point it out let me point this out you can see this thing will appear and here you can see there are these buttons are there i am going to explain you this this is one button this is my second button this is my third button this is my fourth button this is my fifth button and this is my sixth button all these buttons i am going to explain you one by one how it is used in the debugging process and what it is you what we use to call it fine so let's understand these things see when i am taking my cursor to my first button what i am getting when i am taking my cursor to the first button what I am getting? I am getting continue or F5. This F5 is a shortcut. Instead of this button, you can also use this shortcut F5 to do. See, if I will do continue, what will happen? Right now, my breakpoint is here and let's do continue. So, what happens that continue, what continue will do? it will take you to the next breakpoint and if there is no breakpoint in between it will simply execute your program so since my second breakpoint is here so this continue button is taking me to the next breakpoint and now when i am going to the next breakpoint can you see one variable z has all been added so i am getting here can you see this z is equal to 15 the value of z it is showing in the right hand screen with this very in the variable section z 15 i am getting fine and <clears throat> now let's see again if i will click on this continue button what will happen this time what will happen since there is no breakpoint after that i have not added any breakpoint so it will simply what it will do it will simply execute the program fine so let's it again click here can you see my it has disappeared can you see it has gone it has completed again let's say again i am doing this debugging process run and debug again do this thing run python file 
again this thing will appear my breakpoint is here again this breakpoint here. if i will click continue it will go to the next breakpoint if i will uh, again click continue it will simply complete the whole code and it will uh, not get any breakpoint so it will just complete this whole code now let's understand the second thing if this is my second <coughs> button and the, the name of this button is called step over step over now what this step over is this step over means if you will click here this step over it simply means run this line execute this line it will run this line on which it is right now present let's say this is present in this line so it will run this line but it will not get inside this function this is basically a function z is equal to add x comma y this is a function so it will execute it but it will not go inside it so what it will do it will move to the next line step over means simply means to step over the current line that is execute the line but don't go inside the add function so it will execute this line but it will not go inside the add function you will understand this let's do step over i am clicking here so it has executed this line but it has not gone inside this add function and it has moved to the next line now this is my breakpoint if i will simply run this again step over it will again execute this line and move to the next line if i will again do a step over it will continue moving to the next line and finally it will come whenever it has encountered that now my program has finished it will just come out of it now so these two buttons you have understood let's again run again debug this code this time again it has come to this breakpoint now see this is my third button and what is the name of this button step into and can you see f11 f11 is the shortcut of this button there is a step into what this step into to step into the add function and explore its details and uh, how you can do this step over means when if i will click into this step into it will this line this break at this break point my control will step into this function it will go inside this function and it will explore the details it details so let's do it if understand where is my add function this is a function call and where is my add function my add function is written here so i have written my add function here and i have called that add function here so if i will do a step into it will go inside my add function can you see now the control is coming from here to here it is going in stepping into this is what this is what it means stepping into step into this is what it means it is going inside this add function now if you again do this thing step into it will continue going it will come to this line it will finish it then again if you do step into now it will come back to the original original point original position this this breakpoint it will come again if you if you again do this step into it will again now this time what it will do it will go to the next breakpoint it is going to the next breakpoint let's say here again we are uh, just clicking this step into so now this is a subtract function and this is a function call 
where is my function here so it will go inside my subtract function so let's do it let's step into can you see my control is coming from here to here if let's say there is one more button that is called a step out a step out simply means it will come out of it if i will simply click step out it will come back to this subtract this this breakpoint it will come back to this uh, breakpoint this means if you want to come out of this function or out of something you have to use this step out this step out will move you one step back it will move you out so let's do it again i am doing this step into now when i am doing again this step into it is not taking me again inside this it is taking me to the next line so this is the use of all these functions now there is one more button here this is this is a function called restart if you will simply click restart let's see what happens let's click restart simply means this debugging process will again start itself so since i am doing this restart so this debugging process has again started so again it is encountering this first breakpoint so it is coming here and now whatever the step you want to see you can do and the next button and the last button is this red button square in the form of a square this is a red button and it is showing stop if i am clicking here it is showing me stop if you simply click here it will stop the debugging process it simply means that so this is all about this uh, debugging with the help of this simple code we are we have tried to understand so let's understand the same thing will with the help of another code so let me just uh, remove this breakpoint just save this code and let's go to the debug 2 dot ipynb sorry uh, debug 2 dot pi file and let's take another code this time i am taking a little uh, bigger code just to under make you understand the these things so just i am copy and i am pasting this code here and i am trying to understand this debugging process again with the help of this new code now the first thing that i want uh, that we need to do in this process is we have to set the breakpoint so let's set the breakpoint so here in this entire code there are four functions add subtract multiply divide and there is another function in uh, called complex operation and inside this complex operation these are the processes i am calling this inside this function i am calling the previous functions which i have defined add multiply now let's understand this one by one first i want to set the debug uh, debugging point so i am adding i am first adding one debugging point uh, one break sorry one uh, breakpoint i am adding first breakpoint here in uh, the line number 19 and thereafter am i adding second breakpoint in line number 20 and i am adding third breakpoint in line number uh, let's say 21 and i am fourth breakpoint here in line number 22 so these are the four breakpoint i have added after that i need to start debugging so when i will start this debugging process the program will run and stop at the first breakpoint and what is where is my first breakpoint here is my first breakpoint at line number 9 so my pro program will stop here so let's do it so let's do debug run if you will see here 
my program has stopped at the first breakpoint. Now again, keep using these two things. This now, if I will do simply, I will use all these uh, all these uh, buttons here one by one. If simply I will do continue, it will move to the next debug point. Let's. Uh, let's write this. Let's first debug point. It has moved. Then again, I am putting this debug continue. Then again, this. Now after this, if I will again put this continue, it will just go to the it end of the program. Can you see? It is going to the now. This is not going to the next line. It is going to the end of the program. Now let's do one thing. I am removing this breakpoint from in between these two points. Let's remove these two breakpoints and see this. Now let's again re, uh, run this file. If I will run this file, you can see it will stop at the first debug point. Now, if I will this time, if since in between there is no breakpoint, so after this breakpoint, there is a breakpoint here, and I have removed the breakpoint from 20 and 20 line, 20 and 21. So you will see when I will run, when I will uh, run, uh, click this continue button, it will go to the next breakpoint. And where is my next breakpoint? On line numbers 22. So it will come here, it will not stop in between. So let's do it. Can you see here? Since there is no breakpoint in between, so it is not stopping in between. It is just coming to the next breakpoint, which is on line number twenty-two. If you will again do this, continue. It will simply there is no breakpoint from here line number twenty-two till the end of the program. Since there is no breakpoint, so it will come to the end of the program. And my program has finished. And my debugging process will get finished. Let's do it. Continue. Can you see? Now, let's again add these two breakpoints and try to understand these things in more details. So, now let's again run this code, uh, debug this code. Now, see, when I am on a step one, can you see the variables? Value of the variable a10, b7, c, uh, a10, b4, c7. So these are the variables 10, 4, 7. I am getting the value of these variables. I am getting the value of these variables. Now, the this way you can add the value of the variable call stack see this time my call is on complex operation see i am inside this complex operation so that's why i am getting this call stack complex operation i am inside uh, this complex operation paused on breakpoint it is showing that it has paused on breakpoint i am on a breakpoint now if you if i will do this thing Instead of this continue, if I will do simply this step over, what will happen? Let's remove these two breakpoints from here so that it will be understandable. So, if I will do this step over, what it will do? It will execute this line, my present line, and it will move to the next line. Let's see. I am doing a step over. Can you see? It is running this line and it is moving to the next line. Again, if I will do a step over, it is running to the next line. It is moving to the next line. Again, if I will do a step over, it is moving to the next line. If I will continue doing this step over, it will continue moving to the next line. Fine. So, this is how this step over works. Now, let us add this breakpoint again. And again, run this thing. Yes. 
so let's again run this now it has come to the first breakpoint now what i am doing i am doing this step into if i will do a step into what will happen my control will go inside this add function and my add this is a function call this is a function call and where is my add function my add function is written here so my control will come here from here it will come here it will go inside this function and it will keep on executing this so let's do this step into so can you see from here it is coming to inside this function when you run this step into it will go inside this function and now this is a end point of this function now if you again do step into it will come back to the to this breakpoint now if i will again do a step into it will move to the next line next breakpoint step into it will move to the next it is moving to the next breakpoint now let's do again do here again use this step into this time it will step into this multiply function this is my multiply so it will step into this multiply function so it is stepping into now if i will write if i will uh, step out if i will click on step out it will come out of this multiply function let me do it so can you see it is coming out from this uh, inside this function it is coming out to this function call to this line number to the my, to my breakpoint if you will again do this step out it will move it to the next line again here i am doing this step into this time it will step, step into the subtract function if you will write step out it will come out of it if i if i will do a step over so it will keep on executing one line at a time inside this function so let's do it so it is finished now it will automatically this step over will move it to the next breakpoint after it finished its um, operation inside this function this uh, subtract function after it finishes its, its uh, operation if i will continue doing this step over it will move to the next breakpoint and this is my next breakpoint result now let's again do it again uh, uh, do step into this time it will go inside this divide function and if i will do a step out it will step out of it it will come back from there to here and if we, i will simply run this continue what will happen it will just move to the uh, since there is no breakpoint in between so it will just continue till the end of the program that means it will keep on searching for the next breakpoint since since i have not added any breakpoint so it will move to the end of the program so it's done let's again run this program again debug this program now if you will there is two button here one is called restart and another is called stop so let's uh, first do it like this keep on running this thing keep on running this thing step into it let's say i am i am here and i want to restart it again i want to restart this debugging process again so what i have to do simply i have to click on this restart button if i will click on this restart button this process will again start and it will again come here this is the use of this restart and let's say if i i want to end this whole process simply i have to click on stop now the process will end 
so this this was my uh, second program now one important thing here is that you can also add a conditional breakpoint here if you will click if you will do a right click on this breakpoint if you simply right click on this breakpoint there are few options that you can see first option is remove breakpoint if you will just click it, it will remove that breakpoint and second is edit breakpoint so if you will click on this edit breakpoint break when the expression evaluates to true enter to accept escape to cancel what it means here you can enter any expression and when you break the expression brace break when the expression evaluates to true so it means if you will let's say add any expression let's say if i am adding some expression like c is greater than 0 let's say i am writing this expression c is greater than 0 so what it means this breakpoint will only get triggered when this expression comes out to be true if this expression is not coming out to be true this breakpoint will not get triggered when this expression c is greater than 0 is comes out to be true then on only this breakpoint will get triggered fine otherwise this breakpoint will not get triggered if if i will let's say c is greater than 0 so i have added this so now what will happen i have added one condition so if that condition will be true whenever that condition will be true this breakpoint will get triggered otherwise the breakpoint will not get triggered this is the simple meaning of this thing once once this debugging session is completed you can inspect the whole variables in this section so let's move continue let's do continue let's do continue let's do continue fine so if you will see my debugging process let's start this debugging process again this step over this step over if i am using this step over can you see when i am on this step 3 this step on line number 2 and this is before that multiply is there so i am getting the result here also variable a 10 add the result of it is getting i am 14 the result i am getting 14 b4 c7 result of multiply i am getting 98 then step 1 step 2 then again yes yes please ask question i didn't get the previous one that you explained and kindly show me the after 25th kindly show me the code I'm oh. not able to see. Okay, let me let me ping you the entire code in your chat box. That will okay. be better. I have forgot forgot to do that. So let me where is the chat? So I'm not able to do anything what you did. Okay, for, not an issue. I forgot to just ping you this code. So let's take this code. Can you see the? Uh, have you received the code in your chat? You just yes, copy this okay. code and paste it in your uh, yes code. Okay. I just kept this thing. It escaped from my mind. So 
that's why now you can do this again now what what other thing that you are telling me to explain the previous one that you are explaining i'm not able to get it. which previous one which thing we are talking about this watch stock okay this watch no yeah uh, i am प्रीवियस ओके ओके दिस वॉच ये अभी मैं नहीं बता रहा हूं अभी मैं आपको ये बता रहा था कि लेट से हेयर दिस इज माई ब्रेक पॉइंट फाइन एंड इफ यू राइट क्लिक ऑन दिस यू विल गेट दीज ऑप्शन सो देर इज वन ऑप्शन कॉल्ड एडिट ब्रेक पॉइंट सो हेयर इफ यू विल क्लिक दिस थिंग विल गेट अपियर नाउ what i was telling you here you can add anything according to your situations you can add anything according to your situation like in the previous case i have added one thing like uh, c is greater than let's say 3 or something like that let's say 3 c is greater than 3 i have added this condition so what happens so this break point will get triggered only if c is greater than 3 otherwise this break point will not get triggered because i have added one condition here and whenever this condition will get true then and only this break point will get triggered otherwise this break point will not get triggered after writing this you have to simply press enter key this condition get added here at this big point now if i am taking my cursor to here uh, can you see it is writing expression condition c greater than 3 if i am taking uh, my break point uh, my cursor here it is not showing me anything it is not showing me anything but if i again taking my cursor here to the first break point can you see it is showing the expression condition c greater than 0 this means where you can also customize your expression condition according to your situation and it simply means now this break point will only get triggered whenever the value of c is greater than 3 otherwise the whenever the value of c is less than 3 it will not get triggered it it means that if you want to remove the same condition you have to you have to click here again and you have to edit break point and you have to remove this condition let's remove this and press enter key now this condition has been removed again let's say i have added this condition you have to click you have to right click here you have to edit break point and you have to remove this condition let's say remove and press enter key now these two condition has been added when i has been removed now when now again if i am taking my cursor to this break point it is not showing me any condition this is called uh, this is called the conditional break this is called conditional break point that means you are adding a break point but you are applying a condition to it now let's run this let's run this if you can see here the final result is showing here can you see inside in the terminal the final result in 46.5 so when your row run when your entire code is running then you will get the final result what is my final result i have written here the final result is final underscore result so i can you can see my final result is coming in my terminal the final result is 46.5 
but i am not concerned about my uh, uh, this result because uh, this time this uh, because we have already had studied all those things my point here is to explain you this debugging thing so hope this debugging is clear here also let's take one more program to understand this debugging in a more uh, let's remove this breakpoint let's remove this breakpoint and save this code and save this code fine now i am opening my third debug.c and this time let me uh, paste a third code here i am sending you this code in the chat window chat box you can simply copy this code and paste it in your vs code i have sent this co entire code to you so simply you have to copy this code and paste it and try to understand how this debugging is working here fine so now first thing that i have to do while using this debugging is we have to add the breakpoint. So this time I am setting the breakpoint on the line result. Here, let's add debug. Let's add breakpoint here. So I have added one breakpoint here in line number twelve. Fine. After that, here I am adding only one breakpoint. Fine. So now let's run this code. Let's run and debug. Then Python. Can you see my debugging? Can you see this? Uh, when I have started debugging, since this is a breakpoint, at this point, my code stops here. Now, what is the name? So here, my result is this is find largest. Where is my function? This is the find largest function is here. If I will simply step over, when if I will simply step over this, what it will do? It will simply execute this line. That means it will execute at this line and it will move to the next line. So let's first do this thing. Step over. So when I am stepping over, it is executing this line, this result line, uh, result line, and it is moving to the next line. So when it is executing this line, can you see inside the variables, whatever the variable is inside this number 17, 42, 5, 8, 31, 22, it is displaying here all my variables this variable number is displaying here and this result is also displaying here this result because I, this this line has been executed so whatever be the uh, whatever be the result output of this result it is showing here result 42 thereafter i am again doing this step over uh, step over it is finished now let's do and i am finally getting uh, this now let's do again let's again debug this code and this time let's uh, let's again debug this code let's remove this again i am getting coming here let's say this have stopped now this time let's understand this very well this will be let's understand this this time what i am doing i am stepping into it now let's try to understand this is a very beautiful code to understand the flow of control inside my code any in in let's say if you have written any code and that code is a very complex code and you are not able to understand how my control is flowing inside my code so 
you can understand this by using your debugging thing so this is one code where this is very much clear to you so let's step into it see i am doing this stepping step into so result find largest so it is coming inside this function and when it is coming inside this function when it is coming inside this function largest then what is the value of largest number 0 so what is the number that you have supplied this thing this number let's move to the next line step over now when you are stepping over so your largest number is can it it is showing largest is equal to largest is 70 that means largest is equal to you are assuming that your first value the value at the first index is your largest value so it is it is taking your largest value as 17 after that it is moving to the next line now for number in numbers that means whatever number you are here you want to loop over it so this is a case of looping and it will keep on checking every in every loop it will keep on checking whether this number is largest or the next iterated value is largest and it will keep on checking till, till it will reach to the end of the iteration so this thing is there so let's uh, do it one by one step over step over again it is coming can you see when it has completed this first loop it is again coming back now it is going inside checking if number is greater than largest if it is not largest then it is again coming now this time the number is greater than the largest so it is satisfying this condition and my this condition is becoming true and and it is going inside it and now the largest number is equal to number now the second number is greater than my first number so now this has become my largest number again i am stepping into it now this loop it has gone to the let's say another iteration third iteration again i am stepping into so again it is checking if number is equal to is greater than the largest so yes uh, this not greater than the largest then again it is coming again it is going again it is coming again it is going it will keep on this will keep on repeating and finally when it will complete all its iteration it will return me the largest number can you see it has returned the largest largest is equal to 2 uh, 42 number is equal to this thing and it is also showing the the last value whatever the the la uh, the last value of this uh, in this entire list 22 is my last value and the value of the number in uh, at the end is 22 so it is also displaying here so this code is a very beautiful example to demonstrate the flow of control like this if you will if you have let's say you have not written any code you have uh, taken the code from somewhere else and that code is a very complex code and you want to understand and you are not able to understand how the flow of control is working in this code so likewise you can set a breakpoint and with the help of this breakpoint you will uh, be able to understand the flow how the control is flowing in this in this code and you will able to understand the whole program like that so during the time of pro program testing uh, and debugging and testing so this uh, this debugging concept is uh, very much uh, used in the real time software building so this is all likewise let's say you can add a condition here to set a conditional breakpoint what you have to do you have to click on any breakpoint let's say i am clicking here on this breakpoint and let's edit breakpoint and then let's add one condition like number 
sorry number is greater than 20 this is my condition and press enter key so now what will happen so this break now it will can if i am taking this expression condition number greater than 2 22 so it will only uh, trigger when my condition will be true now let's run this now i am stopping this debugging operation let's stop it and let's run this again Now let's run this. Can you see? Since I have added my condition, so expression condition is not becoming a true. So that's why my code is not running because the code will only trigger when my breakpoint is uh, when my condition is greater than twenty. Now let's remove this expression, edit breakpoint, and I am removing this expression. And uh, let's press enter key and let's run this again. This time it is working because I had added such condition. That's why it was not this breakpoint was not working, but now. When I have removed this condition, this breakpoint is working. So, this is called conditional breakpoint. So, hope this thing will be clear to you. And this is all for the debugging. Uh, nothing more in debugging. So, I have used the three different different codes to demonstrate you three different different scenarios. So, by this we have already we have ended the advanced python concept there are a few more things left inside it so maybe i will discuss it sometime later but right now it is all now from uh, next day from tomorrow we are going to discuss uh, we are going to start a new series uh, called pandas so we are going to study pandas in very much detail so don't miss that thing so keep coming keep learning and if you guys is having any doubt you can please wait and uh, i will uh, take your doubts one by one and that's all and guys this is a free education channel channel so don't if any one of you uh, are watching this video kindly subscribe to this channel and also refer to whosoever is interested in learning all these things you can simply ask him to come to us and learn and grow with us thanks thanks for coming